we are going to talk about compassionate communication, why it's important, and how you can do it. So stick around for the details. Hello there and welcome back. I'm Alex Lyon, and we are in the third video of a four-part series on compassion. And today's topic is compassionate communication. And it's really important because compassionate communication can really change the whole atmosphere. It can change your whole environment. Now, the truth is that cruel or compassionate communication both spread. They're both contagious. So you can be a force for good by communicating with compassion in and around your context. You can't control what other people do, but you can lead by example and do your part by communicating with compassion. So compassion is care, kindness, especially the tendency to think about the needs and the good of others. It's a state of mind, a state of emotion that drives us to act with kindness toward others. And we will look at three ways to communicate with more compassion. The first is an old saying, it's not what you say, but how you say it. So say it with kindness and patience, for example. Speak with words and a tone that say you care about people. My old friend and author, Alan Weiner, has a saying, if you could easily finish a statement with the phrase, you dummy, you're using the wrong tone. He has an excellent book on communication and leadership. I'll put a link to that in the description below the video. But the point is your words and your attitude both matter in terms of how you come across, whether you're compassionate or not. And when we say tone of voice, by the way, we usually mean all the related nonverbal cues that go along with it, like eye contact and facial expression. It could be, for example, asking somebody to do something rather than barking out orders and telling them to do it with a rough tone or a disapproving facial expression. So how you say things is just as important as what you say. The second way to communicate with compassion is to listen with compassion. And part of this is listening with empathy. When we listen with empathy, we put ourselves in the other person's shoes to feel what they're feeling. And when we do this, it will stir up our compassion for them when they're in a difficult situation. And then they'll see that we care and they'll feel supported. So listening is huge. And it could be a minor issue. Like I recently went on a vacation to Florida with my family. I'm from upstate New York, you might call it, near Niagara Falls. So we were a long way from home. And one day my son accidentally lost his brand new sunglasses that we bought for our Florida vacation. He left them somewhere. And he's pretty young. So at the end of the day, I made some calls for him to see if we could track down where he might have left them that day. And it turns out they were at a gift shop just down the road. So we drove down to the gift shop. And at first, my son felt pretty embarrassed about having this conversation and losing these sunglasses. But there was a really nice lady at the gift shop. And she so showed so much compassion for him when she gave him his sunglasses back. So uh, my son thanked her and she listened to my son. She looked at him with compassion in her eyes. It was very reassuring and it made him feel much better. So we can listen with compassion. And listening is a major part of our daily communication. It's a huge chunk of what we do each day. And the third way to communicate with compassion is to respond with compassion and encouragement when people are down in some way. So for example, you might feel moved to say something encouraging and authentic and tell people how valuable they are. So I had a great boss once. In fact, it was Alan Weiner, the guy that wrote the book I mentioned a minute ago. He helped me get my start in consulting many years back. And he spoke to me really authentically after I had made a major screw up. So I handled a situation with a client pretty poorly. I was pretty close to brand new there. But he said, you know, Alex, it wasn't your best moment, but you really tried. You did your best. And I really believe in you, Alex. And I could sense that he meant it. He said it with real compassion. And I was in the moment of failure. And it's not every day that supervisors talk to us like this. In fact, I've had other supervisors who might have used this as an opportunity to give me some lecture about how I could have done better and should have done better. But Alan could see that I was already pretty upset about my mistake. And so he took a risk and he was authentic. And 
it really had a positive impact on me, that compassion. In fact, it happened so many years ago, but I still remember it like it was yesterday. People really need that genuine encouragement. We're so desperate for compassion sometimes. So if you feel moved to say something when you're feeling compassionate like that, I say do it and take a risk. It may feel like a risk, but it's worth it. It'll have a genuine impact. So in terms of next steps, as I mentioned, this is a whole series on compassion. I encourage you to check out the other three videos in this series, and I'll link to those in the description below the video. So thanks, God bless, and I will see you in the next video on how to create a compassionate workplace. <laughs>